saw there in the video. So let's bring in Inside Edition correspondent Megan Alexander and actor Dean Kane. Welcome to you both. Great to have you. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you. Okay. Nice to be here. Uh, great to have you. All right, Governor Brian Kemp uh, says this. I can't govern because I'm worried about what someone in Hollywood thinks about me. Probably going to sign the bill, Dean. Well, he's obviously he's clearly 100 percent right. He's not going to veto that bill. He was elected by voters in the state of Georgia, uh, of which Alyssa Milano and probably none of the 100 people who signed that letter are voters in that state. They have to understand the idea of federalism, states' rights. There's a reason that states have their own rights. They can make some of their own laws. And, and those voters spoke. They elected these guys and gals, and that's the, the bill they came up with. The hubris of Alyssa Milano and other people from Hollywood to tell them and sort of try to bully them into aligning with their perspective is shocking. I mean, it's not so shocking to see it coming from Hollywood, but it's dead wrong to do that. Um, whether or not you agree with the bill or not, to come in and try to bully somebody, uh, a state, into uh, your position is just absolutely wrong. Yeah, and, and she and uh, the crew that she works with, they are taping apparently her Netflix show in Atlanta. So she's speaking, she says, on behalf of all those folks. And there's this letter, uh, the entertainment industry, uh, that I think she spearheaded a lot of folks, names people would recognize who signed on to. Listen, we don't want to take our business to Georgia if you're going to have this fetal heartbeat bill. Um, part of the letter said this, we can't imagine being elected officials who had to say to their constituents, I enacted a law that was so evil, it chased billions of dollars out of our state's economy. It's not the most effective campaign <laughs> slogan, but rest assured we'll make it yours should it come to pass. Hollywood, Megan, calling this bill evil. Yeah, this is a fascinating conversation, Shannon, because on the one hand, Dean can relate to this. When we work projects in other states or other cities, we stay there for days, weeks, sometimes months at a time. I actually just shot a film uh, in Atlanta a couple months ago. You begin to feel a kinship to the community, that you're part of the community. And so in, in the one sense, I think that's what Alyssa feels, is that she's working in Georgia, therefore she wants to be involved. However, perhaps she and Hollywood are finally learning that although Georgia appreciates the business of Hollywood, the residents do not want Hollywood to tell them how to think or vote, and that other parts of the country, believe it or not, do not align with the views of Hollywood. And that's what's playing out, I think, in this scenario. Well, on other conversations of faith, uh, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, who is just about, he's got an exploratory co um, committee, looks like he's officially probably going to run for president. He's raising money and, and getting a lot of attention. Um, he was talking about his faith as a progressive and as a Christian. He says this, that his faith is about toward defending the poor, the immigrant, the stranger, the prisoner, the outcast, and those who are left behind. What we have now is this exaltation of wealth and power. Um, and there are a lot of questions. Uh, he was asked about whether he thinks the president believes in God. He says, I don't want to talk about other people's faith, but he doesn't comport his actions with somebody who does have humility and believe in a higher power. Uh, I'll ask you quickly both to weigh in on this, this conversation of the Christian faith in the midst of politics. Dean, to you first. Well, I mean, it's so funny. I, I'm reluctant to speak about someone else's faith, but let me speak about someone else's faith. I mean, that's what, the, what Mayor Pete does there, and I think it's wrong to do so. He's making a judgment call based on, on what he, the, the behavior of the president, but he's making a faith call, and I think he is, is, is mistaken to do so, um, especially when you say, I'm reluctant to comment on someone else's faith, but here I go. Yeah, and Megan, he says he thinks that the evangelicals supporting Trump is a dangerous thing and that people who are considered, consider themselves to be progressive Christians, they need to speak out from that side of the aisle as well. And that's what he says he's going to do. Well, I'd like to say on a positive note, we're talking about faith. We're talking about values, not a lot that we've seen from candidates in the past. So I think that's a good thing. However, some people, they appreciate Mayor Pete is speaking about his Roman Catholic upbringing, his Episcopalian alignment now, the way he interprets the scriptures. But the flip side is that plenty of evangelicals are thrilled that President Trump has aligned with issues passionate to them, pro-life, pro-Israel. So this is going to quickly become a complicated conversation when people start, you know, deciphering which issue is more important than the other. I would say candidates share what your view is, how it aligns with your faith, and then let the voters decide mm -hmm. which candidate they feel is the best choice. Yeah, and I think it's good when people feel comfortable well, sharing sorry. their faith, no faith, whatever it is, um, and just being transparent. So, yeah. Megan and Dean, thank you both very much. Great to have you. Thanks, Shannon. Our thank midnight, you. our midnight.